The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Welcome to the Benjamin Dixon Show. I am your host, Benjamin Dixon. Today is, uh, it is Thursday. I, I have to check the calendar every day. I no longer have any point of reference. This, it is a 23rd, uh, 2020. Thanks so much, uh, for joining me in the news. 4.4 million new unemployed. And I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. That's only the people who have filed successfully for unemployment in the past week. That doesn't include all the people who tried and could not get through the system because the system was inundated. Um, it does not include people who just gave up. So we are at a grand total of 26 million people who have been unemployed uh, in the last five weeks, just five weeks. And still, there is no definitive plan of action from the president of the United States, the Republican Party or the Democratic Party for that matter. In fact, the Democratic Party has capitulated, has rolled over and played dead for the Republican Party in this third round of stimulus that everyone is discussing. Um, We'll go into that into more detail. But the fundamental problem is that we have millions of people, tens of millions of people who are now without work. And the and the, the, the underlying part, like if those people can get some unemployment insurance, that's a good thing. Um, The fact that it's six hundred dollars more, I believe, a week now. Uh, That's an even better thing brought to you in part by, well, wholly by Bernie Sanders. Um, That's the amendment that he got stuck in there uh, that he pushed onto that stimulus bill. And it would not have happened um, without him holding the line. So those that could get the unemployment insurance, that's a good thing. But that's insufficient in the long run because most of those benefits only last four months. And this pandemic is going to last a lot longer than that. Furthermore. Those people represent a l- millions of people who have lost health insurance. And we're talking about people whose employer based health insurance was a matter of life and death for them. And there is no one, not a single Republican and not hardly any Democrat. We have a handful of Democrats who are actually pushing solutions for the people who lost their health insurance in the middle or at the beginning, rather, of this pandemic. This is going to be a very long summer because we have no one. No one is even actually focusing on the fact that in a minute, our food supply chains are going to start breaking down because the people who are working them are getting sick. And even if the supply chain remains intact, no one is addressing the frontline workers, the people who are stocking the shelves at the grocery stores that are getting sick. We have a derelict. There is a dereliction of duty. The entire system is failing us and we don't really see it yet because we've adjusted the human capacity to adjust to insanity. All of the all of the ridiculousness that's around us is unparalleled. We are starting to adjust to this new normal and we're adjusting very quickly. We're getting used to seeing 2000 plus people die every day. We're fastly approaching 50,000 deaths in this coronavirus. And yet. We're still talking about opening up and yet we're still talking about uh, we're still having corporations charge an exorbitant amount for PPE, for respirators. For masks. Right. Nothing has fundamentally changed. And that made me think about this thing for a minute. Like, I mean, I think about it all the time. But but the fact is, is that what we're experiencing Is the ruling elite of this country doing everything that they can possibly do to make sure that nothing fundamentally changes about our capitalistic paradigm? And what I mean by that is that if what we need to survive this is for us to institute a Medicare or Medicaid for all system and for us to institute a universal basic income so that people could stay home and not consume at the levels that we used to consume, but we begin consuming in different ways. That means the economy fundamentally changes because it has to change or else people are going to die. If that's what we need to survive, the ruling elite has says, F that, let them die. However, on the flip side, they have capitalized on this moment, this crisis to fundamentally change the nature of income inequality in this country where trillions of dollars has been thrown to them 
The markets have been artificially propped up. Bailouts, the corporations, billionaires, millionaires have been bailed out while the people have been left hanging out to dry, going out. And, and, and there's a, I'll play some clips. I have a lot of clips today. But the people who are the most vulnerable are our essential workers. We need them, but we're not even taking care of them. And as they begin to get sick, most of them are recovering just because of percentages, but a lot of them are dying. As they begin to get sick and refuse to do this work, we're going to see a tremendous breakdown. But what they're kind of breakdown in our system and, and frustration, people not being able to feed their kids, people not being able to, to put food on the table. I mean, that's going to be something that changes this entire paradigm. And that's coming this summer. But what the ruling elite is counting on is that there's enough people in the supply chain, the labor supply in this case, that will replace all the people who are getting sick and everybody just keeps going on. And we keep limping along in this new normal where the government is giving the billionaires and millionaires and corporations, giving them trillions of dollars that they do not need. They do not need a single dime that they are receiving, whereas the people who are putting their lives on the line are still getting minimum wage. We are in the middle of a crisis on multiple fronts. (sighs) And it's going to lead to our system being destabilized. We talk about this all the time. I I, I don't know who all I've talked to this about online as well as on the show, but it's almost as though the ruling elite really wants to push us to the precipice and push us over the edge. Right. But they're they're We're doing it. We're in the middle of a game of chicken. They're trying to see how far they can push us before we snap. Because they're willing to go all the way to the edge and even go past the edge because they have the they have the the police forces across the country that are going to suppress any insurrection. And so they're really we're really in a bad spot here because the ruling elite have shown that instead of see, here's the thing. It's not as though the money would not go to them anyway. I say this all the time, but I have to say it again. No matter what money the government gives us, it's not as though the landlords aren't going to get their share. The utility companies are going to get their share, right? Uh, uh, the, 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 the internet companies are going to get their share. Amazon is still going to get their share. Walmart.com is still going to get their share because we have to spend to consume. Because the government is never going to see this is the fundamental thing. The government is the the, the American government, a capitalistic late stage capitalism government is never going to give the people what they need to survive, even in the face of a damn pandemic. Because if they if they ever did that, then the economy, the whole world will be flipped upside down because all they know, the only way this system operates successfully as it is right now, is by keeping you so desperate for food, so desperate for shelter, so desperate for water and clothing that you, at the end of the day, if the rubber met the road, you would go out in a pandemic and do whatever the hell you have to do to take care of yourself and your children. And without that level of desperation, this entire system, this entire paradigm flips on its head. Because without that level of desperation, then people could take labor in labor and consumers. The people could take a step back and say, we're not playing these games with you. We're not going out to the bowling alley. We're not going. We're not doing any of these things because we're going to take care of ourselves first. But let it become an issue of going out in the middle of a plague. Or going hungry. People are going to go out. And people are going to die. And the ruling elite have demonstrated time and again that they don't care how many people are unemployed. They don't care if it's 50 million people unemployed. They do not care. All they care about is that if the system changes, it changes in their favor, in the favor of their profit margins, in favor of the income inequality that has helped them be set aside in the pantheon of the elite, pantheon of the ruling class, so that they can always remain in this higher echelon, completely removed from the problems of the unwashed masses. Okay, let's do this patron party and when we come back, I've got some media for you to show you how absurd it all is www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. Here we go. 
New patron party music for all of the patrons. Thank you so much. Without you, this show is entirely impossible. Welcome aboard to Andre Spells. Thank you for becoming a patron. Welcome aboard to Chelsea Smith. Thank you for becoming a patron. Orion Deshay, thank you for becoming a patron. I think you pronounce this Jadindi. Thank you for becoming a patron. Malik Alexander, thank you for becoming a patron. UIYNG, thank you for becoming a patron. Consoli, thank you. Consoli, thank you for becoming a patron. Malik, thank you for becoming a patron. Kevin McLean, Gabriel Bailey, and Ari Slater, thank you all for becoming patrons. Let's bop. Come on. You too can become a part of this prestigious and prodigious patron family by going to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show where you get twice the content and none of the advertisements like you're going to hear somewhere about right here. Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon show. Visit us online at www.thebenjamindixonshow.com Welcome back, everybody. So, I, you know, I, I can't... Our, the ruling elite of this country, they have failed us and they have left us out here on our own. Bread lines across the country. Tens of millions newly unemployed in the last... Five weeks, 26 million people unemployed that we have record of. That doesn't include the people who couldn't get through the system. Um, They have been left without health insurance like most of us. I mean, like, well, not most of us, but a a lot of us have lived without health insurance. And now there's 26 million new people. And I, I use that number not to assume that all of them had health insurance before, but because they had families. Their employer based insurance helped cover their families and nobody. Nobody is seriously coming to help. Every other country is doing something for their citizens. Taking care of them, dropping money into their banks so that they can continue to consume. But this government is doing nothing for us in neither party. I'm sorry, I don't care how many times Democrats get on Twitter and act as if they are outraged. They're not doing anything about it. As though the most that they can possibly do is get on or write a, a sternly worded letter. I think there's an article. I actually, no, I know there's an article coming out uh, that came out that says that Nancy Pelosi is getting ready to play hardball. Well, it's too late now, Nancy. Right. You all rolled over on the third round of the stimulus package and there's literally nothing in that package for a single Working family in this country, black, white, Asian, Native American, it doesn't matter. Nobody is getting anything except for the corporations, except for the billionaires. It's the way it always has been. But we're in the in the middle of a global pandemic. And instead of doing something to help us, the party that is ostensibly the party of the people, which it clearly is not, is abandoning us. And tweeting about it and doing articles about it and getting and and getting profiles done about them about it, but literally doing nothing for the people, the candidates running for office, the president of the United States, obviously. Right. This is not I'm not going to jump. I I will never jump. I'm going to I'm going to call it like I see it. I don't care whose side is on who, whose color, whose team is blue, whose team is red. I'm not a part of any of that. Because both of them have failed us. It's just, I, here's where I won't allow a false equivalence. The Republicans are a literal death cult where it's not good enough for them to just enrich themselves and enrich their, their ruling elite, but they actually want to force you to go out into public. Governor of, uh, the lieutenant governor, rather, of Texas is talking about their worst things than death. Really? Have you tried it? Because I want you to try it first. Right. I want you to go out there and tell me how bad death really is. And then and then let me know. The governor of Florida getting ready to open back up the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp. And it's odd. It's odd. Of course, Donald Trump is a hypocritical bastard. But I think yesterday he did something that actually is going to help save some lives here in the state of Georgia. And so while I know he is is full of shit and he is useless and worthless. Here is a brief moment yesterday where he probably has helped save some lives. I told the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, that I disagree 
strongly with his decision to open certain facilities which are in violation of the phase one guidelines for the incredible people of Georgia. They're incredible people. I love those people. They are they're great. They've been strong, resolute. But at the same time, he must do what he thinks is right. I want him to do what he thinks is right. Uh, but I disagree with him on what he's doing. But I want to let the governors do. Now, if I see something totally egregious, totally out of line, I'll do. But I think spas and beauty salons and tattoo parlors and barber shops in uh, phase one, we're going to have phase two very soon, is just too soon. I think it's too soon. And I love the people. I love I love those people that use all of those things, the spas and the beauty parlors and barber shops, tattoo parlors. I love them. But they can wait a little bit longer, just a little bit, not not much, because safety has to predominate. We have to have that. So uh, I told the governor very simply that I disagree with his decision, but he has to do what he thinks is right. Yeah, well, he's going to get a lot of people killed. But thankfully, the president of the United States is much of a moron as he is. I, listen, I, I have no problem saying when the president accidentally does something right. OK, he's clearly throwing Brian Kemp under the bus because as the polling came out, I believe it was some 90 percent of Georgians said, hell, no, this is not the right decision and this is too soon. And so Donald Trump is clearly taking advantage of the fact he's throwing Brian Kemp under the bus to make sure that they don't lose Georgia when it comes to this next election. All right. Let's just call a spade a spade. But in his in his disingenuousness, he inadvertently landed on the right side of history and may have saved some lives. I still think he's a scumbag moron who's going to get a lot of people killed. But here I am actually grateful. Thank you, Mr. President, for actually doing something that, you know, happens to be in your best interest and happens to be in the best interest of some people surviving. But if the if the if the if the the polls were at all ambiguous, if maybe like 60 percent of Georgians thought that this was too soon, you know, Donald Trump would have just pounded his talking point because uh, let me let me let me explain again. I know, you know, but I want to say for those who may not know why they are trying to open up, they're trying to they're trying to open up and and cast it as these are working people who need income. Right. In reality, they have been lobbied by millionaires and billionaires and corporations who need us to go out there to consume. This isn't about hurting families, families that are hurting. Right. Make sure there's no ambiguity there. This isn't about families that are hurting and need income. This is about employers who need revenue. But they're trying to say, oh, well, families need they need money. They need money. Well, see, here's the thing. The hypocrisy of it all is you just gave trillions of dollars to corporations and gave us a pittance. Like it is a decision. It is a decision of the government to leave people out here without income, without some type of some type of uh, 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 of uh, wage. The government can simply give it to us because they've given trillions to Wall Street. There's literally no need for these companies to open back up in order for people who need money to get money because the government has demonstrated that it will give trillions to Wall Street, to the markets, to billionaires. But then when it comes down to hurt families that are hurting that need money, they say go back to work in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. So anyone who's who's pushing that lie, including Democrats. They're anyway. Let me let me let me let me dial it back down. So, you know, these things, but these are the things that are adding up. And as people begin to become aware, more cognizant of the game that's being played on us, the more enraged people will get. And that's not enough. You know what's going to do it? You know what's going to be the tipping point for this country when these food supply channels and chains begin to break down and the grocery stores no longer have sufficient supply stock because their workers have gotten sick and it becomes difficult for people to feed their families. You think (laughs) I got three kids. 
Let me tell you something. The reason I fight so hard to preserve this system is because I want stability for my children. Now, if this system outright turns on us like it has and all of a sudden I can't feed my kids, what the hell you think me and a whole bunch of other people are going to do when it's when, when we're desperate? And the game that they're playing, this is not a threat. I'm trying to help you guys understand. And I know they know this. Let me just take a side. I know the ruling elite knows this, but what they're doing is they want to see how far they can get us to the brink before we snap. Keep playing stupid games and you're going to get some stupid rewards. When the government said we can't go out, that's a prohibition. And it's illegal. It's against the Constitution. I am immune compromised. I put that at risk today. I put that at risk today because I got to be here. Yeah. Are you scared to die? No more scared than I am for anything else. Freedom! Freedom! For long lockdown, basically a slavery. I'm risking my life today. Fine. I want you to understand this is China's wet dream to hurt our nation. It's their wet dream. And this is about our liberty, brother. Who do you think's agenda this is? Listen. <laughs> he coughed at the end. <laughs> I mean, that's the perfect answer. The agenda, the coronavirus has its own agenda, you moron. <laughs> These people are so, see, this is the other side of the equation. Not only have their ruling elite left us out here to die, you have, there's such a level of stupidity across this country that there are plenty of people who are willing to sacrifice themselves on the, on the altar of their ideology. This, this dude, the guy who coughed at the end, there were a couple of voices that you heard, but the guy that coughed at the end was a guy who was at the very beginning talking about freedom. I'm immune compromised. Yeah, you big dummy. Like, listen, I, I don't rejoice or, or revel in anyone's demise, but stupidity kills. Ugh. I can't. I mean, we're fighting stupidity as much as we are classism. This is a class warfare, but it's also an information warfare. I know, I know that's the long way of saying info wars, but they got they cornered the, the morons corner the market on info wars before we. I mean, Alex Jones, he, he literally took what this is. He. Here's the thing that they do. I, I, I just I'm taking an aside because that that clip that I just played was so obscene, so absurd that I have to take a little aside here. But here's what happens. Propagandists, conspiracy theorists, con men, they know that the ultimate con is when you make people believe that they have information that no one else has. In other words, when you make people believe that they're woke. But the definition of your wokeness is actually ignorance. That is the ultimate con. It's the con that keeps on giving. And that's how people are conning their way through. I mean, it's not just a conservative thing. We have con men on the left. We have some of the best con men that you've ever met in your lives on the left. They have no regard for the fact that there's a plague outside. They're going to con their way into making millions of dollars off this coronavirus. We have them in media too. But the best of the best, the elite, the vanguard of propagandists right now come in the form of the Republican conservative movement. They are out here pimping. And they're not just pimping for money. They are out here pimping these people to their graves. These morons. And you can't reach them. There's nothing more difficult. I'll talk about this in the bonus in the patrons only episode. We're going to stargaze a little bit today. There's nothing more difficult than helping someone break free from a false epiphany, a false revelation. When people think that they are woke, but they have actually been indoctrinated with nothing but propaganda, lies and conspiracy theories. The most difficult thing to do is to break them out of it because they feel like they have had an aha moment. I've got the world figured out. I've got the universe figured out. In reality, they have been conned and they're giving up their money and their time. And in this case, their lives for what they believe to be the truth. We'll make it up. Put us together. We'll make it up. Put us together. We'll make it up. Put us together. Hey guys, Nurse Jamie and Diana here. We just wanted to come on here and offer some guidance um, now that we've been dealing with the coronavirus for a few weeks 
and offer you guys a tip on how to stay safe that a lot of people seem to be struggling with. So it's actually really quite simple. Um, what you're going to want to do is stay the fuck home. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's literally, that's, just, that's it. That's it. Queens. All right. Um, I asked a question on Twitter yesterday. How many unemployed will it take? For us to actually get our leaders to do something and why aren't the Democrats doing anything about it? Why aren't they taking the lead? Here are your answers. Hey, it's Robert from Virginia. Not to be baby's first Marxist, but it feels like the reason the Democrats won't do anything is because they're first servants to capital. Like they care about their donors. They don't give a shit about anything else. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to take care of the people who pay for them to get elected, the people who let them multiply their wealth. Every time they, someone goes into office, five, six years later, they're twice or three times as wealthy as they went in. And you don't do that on 160K. You do that on 160K plus your established wealth plus the insider connections that being in the government gives you. So they're going to protect who butters their bread, and it's not who butters their bread, and it's not us. It'd be nice, but Bernie tried that, and he got his teeth kicked in, and so this is where we are. Benjamin, this is Alexis. I'm calling from New York. Um, I'm just thinking that, you know, I would have thought the unemployment rates would have made a big motivating difference by now. That used to be um, a pretty low bar uh, in the U.S., but I do think that something that we are maybe not giving enough credit to is the fact that our economy isn't particularly labor-based and that it is divided into two very different spheres. There's one sphere where you can see the sort of upper class for people who are able to work at home, um, whose assets aren't from, you know, necessarily producing anything, uh, but trafficking information and utilization. Hey, Ben, this is Tyler from New York. Um, I saw your question on Twitter. It's going to take a, basically until it affects the people in power and, and so, like, it's bad enough for, like, it, like right now, we even know, like, 22 million people unemployed is devastating and tragic and unprecedented. I think it really is irrelevant until it actually starts impacting the people in power and the extreme wealthy and basically the de – and I think your the other part of your question, which – is why isn't the Democrats doing, why isn't the Democratic establishment doing anything about it? Other, um, obviously, other than the squad and Ellen Omar and Rashida Tweed and AOC who are at least saying something or at least presenting ideas. Uh, I think, I think the obvious answer being that a lot of those Democrats share the same donors and have the same, um, wealthy contributors as the Republicans, but it's also the fact that once again, it's not impacting them yet. It just isn't impacting. It isn't hitting those people in power hard enough yet. They just don't really care and until, in fact, and that's basically why they want, you know, the Democrats are enabling and allowing these Republicans and the governor of, of these, of these southern states that are allowing their states to, to reopen is because they, they really don't care and until, you know, it impacts, every, you know, it's the same ideology even as the Republicans in the same way. Until it impacts me, I don't, I don't care. And as long as I get my bottom line, it's, that's a very deep, I think it's ultimately has to do with capitalism. And it's, yeah, it's these, these Dem like Nancy Pelosi was put in power and she's in power because she benefits from the capitalistic system. So therefore these Democrats are not going to give any hindrance. They're not going to give any ability. Because a lot of the policies that would help the American people right now are policies that Bernie and the left wing of the Democratic, the Bernie wing of the Democratic Party, a lot of his policies will help the people. So if they give credence to Bernie's policies, then they're basically forfeiting the fact that they suspect Joe Biden, who has been the antithesis of Bernie's policies. So. <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. I'm Joe Crane, and I'm from Kansas City, Mo. And I'm calling because the Dems aren't taking the lead on this issue because they never take 
the lead on any issue that would matter for us. We've been betrayed over and over and over and over again. We're talking about the war vote. We're talking about the bankruptcy bill. We're talking about the spy bill. These are people that are only interested in it for their corporate donors. We do not come up on their radar at all. We just aren't there for them. And consequently, they're not there for us. Thanks. Hi, um, Amy from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I don't need to be live on air. When Congress was going to get rid of like, the Oversight Committee, the Ethics Committee, we inundated the switchboard with calls. Why can't we do that now? Because I do believe that Congress isn't going to do anything unless somebody they depend on are in pain. We can't inconvenience them because they're not at work, and it's not like anybody has Nancy Pelosi's home number to tell her to put down the ice cream spoon and get to work. So where's this leadership? Is there a hashtag I'm missing? So maybe if we're all home, we can mark, we can make these phone calls. We can jam up another switchboard. That's just my two cents. Hello. Um, it's uh, Gage from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And to answer the question of how many people will have to be thrown under the bus till they start noticing the meat grinder uh, leaking a little bit, I think it'll, if it hasn't taken 25, possibly people like me who got fired beforehand because of, you know, employers not wanting to really deal with people freaking out about it. So people like me aren't even added to the unemployment numbers. So it's like, well, around, I'd want to say around 30 million, especially by the end of this week. So if that doesn't change anyone's mind, I don't know what 50 or 60 million doesn't do because a million is still a million people and that's still a million families being affected. So I don't know how that number doesn't make them want to do anything so they definitely do have to put pressure on and i'm looking at you know warren maybe but definitely like anyone from the sanders camp obviously and aoc she's doing what needs to be done but more more them need to do that and that ended out like pelosi and schumer they just don't really care past the surface level stuff you see on the news because they'll fight for hospitals and test stuff that you that that should be the basics anyway in a pandemic, but they won't fight for bailouts for normal people, for students, for people who are unemployed, like actual unemployment help with them, not not all these all these loopholes and whatnot. Actual Medicare for people, helping the homeless, all these things. None of them are addressed. None of them are addressed because guess what? We don't give them money. Well, not as much as people like Bloomberg and all that kind of stuff. So that's why they're not doing anything. And that's why Pelosi's, you know, taking this ice cream thing to the chin and having the people on the view, four other rich people, defend her. Because they care more about suburban people more than they do working people. And someone who's a class trader and was born in the suburban family. We're dumb as shit. We don't deserve all this. We're all equal in my eyes, but you know what? Just got to keep fighting for it. That's, that's all we can do. All right. Peace. Thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. You've been a beautiful audience. I don't know. The music just makes me want to say that. Patrons, stay tuned after the music. We have a whole another 30 minutes to go. Everyone else, go to patreon.com forward slash BPD show to get access to that show or else I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon Show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.